Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Waku, an AI safety researcher. It's been a few months since my last video, so I wanted to just bring you all up to date. And yes, Dr. Waku is still alive. I'll talk a bit about what I've been up to and highlight some exciting news for my content creation journey. As always, this video will have three parts. Personal update, what the channel is for, and encouraging community. Part one, personal update. Well, where have I been? As you might have guessed, I've been pretty busy with work. And work for me doesn't just mean the job that I'm paid for, but many other things besides. So I was focusing on three areas. First, I was spending time becoming a technical researcher in a subfield called AI safety. AI safety is somewhat similar to cybersecurity, which is what I did my PhD in, and so I'm used to how research works in that field. But it was still a lot of work, and there were a lot of new concepts to learn, because machine learning as a whole was pretty new to me. Second, I was also trying out different roles in AI communications. That is to say, communicating about AI risk to the general public. I'll talk more about one aspect of that in a minute, but I did want to highlight that I finally met Rob Miles in person. And if you don't know him, Rob Miles is probably the most famous AI safety YouTuber. His content is aimed at people who want to actually understand the technical details and become AI safety researchers themselves rather than just the general public, but he's still very well known in his space. And in case you haven't heard of him before, check out the link to Rob Miles in the description below. The third thing I was doing is learning a lot about the AI safety community and how people work and interact. The first thing to know about AI safety is that people generally live in a handful of cities around the world, especially San Francisco and London, and they actually co-work together with other people in AI safety. It's kind of unusual, but it's very nice. So this year I visited three top AI safety hubs to talk to a lot of people. Actually, I went on a lot of trips. I think I attended a total of eight different conferences just in AI safety. And I also participated in two AI safety programs and co-taught another one, in addition to making four trips unrelated to AI safety. So I was basically flying all over the place this year. Now, just recently, I switched away from the job where I was trying to do a lot of technical research myself, and I now have a new role which focuses on advising people on AI safety research. This is great for me because I can be involved in many different projects at once. And any limitations I might have, like being able to use my hands, if you're new to the channel, I have a medical condition, so I can't type too much on computer keyboards, or limitations about being new to machine learning, those don't matter so much when you're working with someone else who does have those skills. So overall, I think this is one of the best use of my skills that I could imagine at this moment, and I'm very thankful to have this new position. You might ask, what about YouTube? And like my previous position, where I asked my employer to allow me to spend time creating YouTube videos, I did the same this time, and they said, okay. I feel like in my last job, it worked moderately well. I had enough time, especially early on, to make quite a few videos, and I did some interviews as well. But then once I started to get involved in a lot of projects in parallel, and once the travel really started kicking up, I just had to take a pause on YouTube creation. I'm trying to allocate the space and time to ensure that I can keep making videos on a regular basis now in this current position. And it's still very important to me because I see my work as part-time researcher, part-time communicator. Part two, what the channel is for. A lot has happened in the last year. The original purpose of my YouTube channel was basically to inform people about how AI and future technology would impact their lives. The original purpose for me was to practice teaching and to learn about AI because I was having to read papers and articles about it to make the videos. But now I have shifted professionally into the AI safety field. Researching for YouTube videos is not necessarily the best way for me to learn new topics now. However, I can still make videos based on what I'm seeing, what I'm doing, or already know in the space. And I'm hopeful that those will be just as interesting and useful. So if I had to define my new purpose, I think it would be to educate people interested in AI about AI safety by doing what I always do, clear synthesis of complicated topics, offering a balanced perspective, and trying to excel at the research depth and the presentation style. And this is the key point. I want to communicate this information in enough detail that you, my viewers, can go and explain the same topic to somebody else. Of course, I hope you will also refer them to my video, but if this topic comes up at the dinner table, etc., I want you to be well-informed and able to talk about it. Hopefully, over time, the videos become a trusted reference. And even if you're a researcher or a journalist, when you're at that dining room table with your family, you might point to these videos 
as the reference that you should go to to learn more about AI safety. After all, widespread public familiarity with AI safety creates the political conditions that might enable changes to happen. Because right now, AI is not very safe, unfortunately. And we can change that, but it will take policy changes, regulatory changes, and probably societal changes as well. It's a huge and thorny problem. Now, I know that you, my audience, may not be all that interested in AI safety at the moment because many people came along with me from AI in general. But I hope that you'll join me on this journey and that you'll watch some of my videos and perhaps learn to think about the safety of AI systems in a more nuanced way. Right? Nothing is black and white, especially something as complicated as making sure an AI system does what you want and not necessarily what you say. So in addition to continuing my channel in this slightly different direction, I'm also trying to do outreach to audience members that are even less familiar with AI. And to do that, I'm starting a new secondary YouTube channel, which is focused on YouTube Shorts. The tentative name for this channel is called Steering the Frontier. It might still get changed, who knows. If you feel like you are less familiar with AI, and especially if you are actually likely to watch shorts, I know that not much of my audience actually watches shorts based on the analytics, then I would love if you could subscribe to that channel, share it with somebody. We will be starting to put shorts videos on there early in January. And the goals of that channel are to raise awareness about AI safety issues, provide a community with a shared mission, where each person can offer their unique experience with AI. And here's the real difference with that channel. First of all, I'm not very good at shorts. We know this from how well the shorts perform on this channel. And also I'm really bottlenecked on my own time. So for this new shorts channel, I'm collaborating with a number of different people whom I recruited through AI Safety Camp, and we're gonna be collaborating and working together to create those videos. So you probably won't see me talking all the time, but I'll be there in the background working on the video scripts and I will occasionally film videos myself. After all, to have a shorts channel succeed, I think you have to do like one video per day, roughly, and I definitely couldn't keep up that pace myself. So we'll see how it goes. Wish us luck. Part three, encouraging community. Something else I started very early on in this YouTube channel's existence was to create a Discord community because I wanted to really talk to my viewers and understand them and feel this sense of community. I think it was very successful for a while when I had multiple videos pretty close together that had blown up on YouTube. I didn't have time to participate in the day-to-day -day communications very much, but I did have occasional group calls where we would bring together people from the community and everyone could talk and say what was on their mind, listen to my perspective on something or ask me a question. And that will be continuing. We have a proactive admin there now, so it doesn't just rely on me for everything. So if you haven't joined already, definitely hop into our Discord. The link is in the pinned comment below. Another aspect of community that I've been engaging in more recently is mentorship. I'm helping people break into the field of AI safety, helping them with research, helping them with applications, helping them think through their career or their career transition. Because while there are a fair number of people that go into AI safety straight out of undergrad, if they've studied the right things, it's a very interdisciplinary field. And so you often get people coming in from later careers, later career paths, and bringing different experience that are trying to pick up AI safety uh, topics. Anyway, if that's something you're interested in, definitely reach out to me on Discord and ask for mentorship. And I'll see if I can get you connected in the appropriate forum for that. A quick note also about anonymity. So as you know, I am anonymous on this channel. Dr. Waku is not actually my real name. However, I go to a lot of conferences in AI safety. So if you go to one, you're fairly likely to run into me as well. By all means, interact with me IRL, so to speak, in real life with my real name. I just ask that it not my real name not be linked with the Dr. Waku name in a public place, like in YouTube comments or on LinkedIn or something like that. Why am I anonymous? Well, it's a decision I made quite some time ago and I've stuck with it. It can sometimes be pretty annoying having two different contexts in which I talk about or create things. But I also think it's useful because I seem a lot less biased. You know, people can't point at my background or some detail about where I work and say, well, I don't believe this person because X, Y, Z. You know, I am here 
to just present you with information in an engaging and compelling fashion and not to get into arguments with people that then look me up in real life and start spamming me with messages or something like this. In general, I am going to start leaning on more people as much as I can to help with community aspects as well as to help with some of the video creation like for the shorts channel that I mentioned. So if you see some opportunity to help and you think that you are perhaps the right person to help, then please volunteer. It takes more than one person to build a strong and thriving community. Finally, some trivia. It was almost exactly two years ago when I predicted that AGI would arrive in two years. It wasn't a very scientific estimate or even a very good one necessarily. I was just compiling what other people were saying at the time. And the problem with AGI is that there's no real strict definition of that term. It generally just means AI that's as smart as a human, but sometimes it's also taken to mean AI that can do any job that humans can do. And so it's a very fuzzy thing. I personally think that the models we have now, especially after the spate of recent model releases in the past few weeks, should qualify as AGI. They probably are what we thought of as AGI before this whole trend started. But now, of course, as AI development has taken off, the goalposts continuously shift and so people probably think, oh no, it's just a chatbot, it's just an AI, it's not AGI. I agree that it is not very agentic. It is not able to go out and do things in the world so well yet, which is why it hasn't had as much impact on job replacement as it might otherwise have had. But I think it should still count as AGI. What do you think? Do the latest Claude Opus or Gemini or even OpenAI models count as AGI? Let me know in the comments. Finally, in conclusion, I have been very busy with work trying to become a researcher, trying out different roles in AI risk communication, and mostly learning the AI safety community and how it works, and going to tons and tons of conferences. I do this, by the way, because I enjoy it, and because I think that one of my strengths is talking to people in real life and understanding them and what they're saying and remembering them and trying to connect them to a network in the future. It's been very helpful for my career so far, and it lets me do mentorship, which I also really enjoy. So yeah, it seems to fit my life at the moment. Since most of what I think about these days is AI safety related, I am going to continue this channel, but I'm focusing it a little bit more specifically on AI safety. I'll try to do it in a way that my existing audience still appreciates, and uh, you guys let me know if I'm succeeding in that or not. And I'm starting this new collaborative YouTube Shorts channel for all my hot takes on AI safety. And the working name for that is Steering the Frontier. So make sure you follow it if you actually like Shorts content. And finally, if you think you would be good at community building, or if you just want to participate in my community, then please join the Discord or whatever other things I spin up because I realized something. In AI safety especially, you often hear about all these problems and then the average person says, okay, but what can I do about this? And the answer is always unsatisfactory. It's like, well, you can go right to your political representatives so that they know that this is a problem and maybe that will impact things in the future. But actually, there's a much more concrete thing that people can do, which is simply to get involved in a community that's talking about this and sharing that because together we can talk about all these important problems and bring light to them, so to speak, and have some fun while doing it. If you liked this video, or rather you want to see an actual video that teaches you something, then check out this previous one I made about why AI is not like other technology and will instead change everything. It's a good example of the type of video I want to make on this channel, so check it out, see if you like it. In the past, I always made these Christmas special videos, which were extra long and released them around this time of year. I don't think this one's gonna be so long, but at least you got to see something and listen to something perhaps over the holiday season. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you very much for watching. Bye.